Hoo-wee, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. So, got a couple things here. Got a couple things here. One is gonna be this guy right here. You see it in the in the uh, in the crosshairs. There, oh, the wind is blowing you down. Yo ho, blow the phone down. All right, so I'm gonna put my foot on that to hold you guys up. You know, the, the wind is deceiving. It, it feels nice, but man, it catches you guys. <laughs> Y'all are gone. All right, so, uh, so what we're doing today, let me adjust it here the se expat darian machete and now if you ever looked at it it would say right here expat knives right and you're thinking if it's expat knives made in el salvador well then how the hell is it se um expat a division of se blades is actually like a person expat was like some kind of like a wilderness survival trainer and did all kinds of stuff and um, worked very closely and learned from um, the SE training guys, right? Use a lot of SE equipment, stuff like that. So that's how the SE um, expat connection got together. There's a whole story of it. I'm not gonna get into it because you guys would be as bored as I would be just saying it. Um, now this is called the Darien, right? And the Darien is, is a, uh, I believe it's called the Darien Canal or the Darien Passage um, between like, Panama and Colombia, um, it's this jungle area and they were building a highway apparently and couldn't finish for various reasons and the, the area is treacherous and a lot of bad guys out there. But um, when you are in an area like that, what you need is something phenomenal. So um, with the help of SE Designing, um, Expat Knives was able to come out with the Darien Machete. Um, I have some specs down here for you. We have a blade length of 12.375 inches, handle length of 5.8125 inches. Couldn't just be like five or six, right? Um, it is 1075 high carbon steel. I believe there is a, um, a Condor relationship between Expat SE and Condor. I think there's something going on. Um, we have a blade thickness. It's machete, remember, so don't expect a big thick blade of 0 0.094 it is a 5456 typical in a uh, good machete um rockwell hardness uh it is a flat grind with a oh, condor finish so i'm assuming uh, i don't know if the finish is called condor or if it's something condor does with them um i do not know somebody will correct it uh the handle is micarta the sheath is canvas it's tan. It's only 15.5 inches for a blade this long. 15.5 <coughs> inches. It's really good. Got like a <coughs> man. All this stuff blown around. All this stuff blown around, guys. It's just I must have breathed in one. So there's this. We're about to get into this, but before I do, I have just two shout outs. Just two. It's not going to take very long. Um, the first shout out is a new channel. And he's only got one subscriber, and I know because it's me. Um, it's called Woodsman, W-O-O-D-S-M-I-N. This guy's like from Scandinavia, speaks perfect English. Crazy cool guy, really, really good guy. Woodsman Knives Channel. Knives Channel is one word. One word, but it has um, knives and channel are both capitalized. So if you went to my, um, my Facebook page, you would see Donnie B all day, but Facebook doesn't let let you have a, a separated last name. So all day is connected, but the day is still capitalized. So it's A capitalized, all capitalized D, right? So go to my uh, go to my Facebook channel, you'll see. Um, and I just posted a video from this guy, Woodsman Knives Channel, Knives Channel being one word, um, and. Uh, it's awesome. He bought a John Jay, a D-Bad, John Jay tribute um, buoy from the Kukri house, and he does some testing with it, and it's awesome. He did it with rosewood grips too, man. It looks gorgeous, um, but he loves the knife, and he ordered a Mission 3, a D-Bad Mission 3, so if you really want to see somebody talk about that Mission 3 other than me, if you really don't believe how great it is or how great that John Jay tribute is, um, go to this guy's channel because he's showing, he's stabbing through metal. Um, so, uh, there's that. Now I'm looking at his stuff and right now he's got one, two, three, four. He's only got five videos on there right now. He's brand new. So literally 
He's been doing this for a week, so it wouldn't take you guys too long to catch up on what he's got. Subscribe to the guy. He's definitely coming out with more stuff. I cannot wait for him to get the um, to get the D-Bad Mission 3. Um, it, it's He's going to make a killer video out of it. He does, he does good stuff. He actually uses the knives. All right, so... Um, that is that the next one the other the other shout out is my man jason man over at mountainous so i told you guys a story about zach stork and some things that got going on with like this movie idea zach's the guy that sent me the kiss the autographed kiss thing and he sent some other stuff and now i'm working on him with some other these guys and this is his brother jason his brother jason this whole family is dope i mean these guys are awesome man but it's mountainous m-o-u-n-t-a-i-n-o-u-s mountainous this guy for all you adventurous this guy was like a tv adventurous he did some like a show in canada and and all kinds of stuff um uh, and he's just he's known around the world he does a lot of cool different things he's a big guy too He's like my height. He's about 6'3", but he's 250. He's a big dude, and he does this BMX trick riding. And I'm like, how is a man this big doing all this stuff? But it's amazing. But he has all kind. I mean, he's got categories of different kinds of videos, stuff from the TV shows, like like um, fight scenes as like ninjas are dressed up in different things, and they do fight scenes, or um, even like snowboarding, like ninja snowboarding, which is a ninja snowboarding or dressed up in and some kind of weird thing and just crazy stuff. But for you guys like Carl Ruger and all you guys who are huge into the Japanese um, stuff and form, uh, he has, he, he is um, a lifelong martial artist and uh, he is very, very good, but he does a lot of Japanese um, weapons arts and um, one of them being Japanese archery, which I think is one of the most beautiful things in the world. And the guy is, I mean, he's good. He's really good. So check out Mountainous, um, and let's get going on this guy. So I don't want to wait too much longer. Oh, you know what? I brought something out. Woo-wee, I brought something out. Totally forgot about this. Totally forgot about this. All right, so let's uh, let's see. Is that? Oh, yeah, we're going to get it in there. We're going to get it in there, guys. It's been a while since I brought out a milk jug, and I figure... This is the kind of thing that's appropriate for this kind of thing. So let's take a swat. Whoo! Man, not only was that cut as clean as a cut can be, but I don't know if you heard the noise it made. It went ting. That was that was kind of awesome. All right, let me go throw that away. All right, to try and keep this video from being 75 minutes long, let's talk about it as we walk over to the stump. Um, at first grip, I didn't like it, which is weird because anything that comes from Essie, whether they just designed it or they made it, um, always has a grip I really, really enjoy holding. This one, it, it's it's almost pistol grip style, and it has like this weird, it's almost like a weird roundness to it. And uh, it just, I don't know, it's thick right here. It's really, really wide. Smaller hand guys, you might have a problem with this. Remember, it is a machete, so it's made to be, you know, held on like a machete. So you're getting that full grip. Um, but, I don't know, for some reason, at first grip, I didn't really like it. Here's the thing, though. The more I hold it, the more I kind of, I kind of get the feel of it. So while I'm not 100% in love with the grip, while the scales I love, like this Micarta's, I mean, it's beautiful, beautiful grip as far as to look at. Holding it, it's not what I would design for my own hands, but that's just me. You might hold this and say, that's the nicest machete feel I've ever held in my life. And some people do, some people get that out of it. Um, for me, it's just a little bit different uh, and I'll, I'll say it that way because it's not bad it's just different um but let's do a let's do a couple drop tests and we will see you can really feel like everything how it's made as you come up this thing um we'll do a couple drop tests we'll see how well it's balanced um now i need to go four feet from tip to stump so i'm probably going to hold it low like this so i can really get it up in the air without anything going wrong and you can see, even on a windy day, 
that the belly in the front is giving it a really, really straight flight through the air because you have that awesome shape right here that, uh, you know, just incorporates mass to the front of the blade and that's for downswing. That's all that's for. When you have, when you have a blade where it's thin here and thick here, it's made for one thing and that is going forward especially when you have no weight back here. So if there's no butt back here, knife tushy, um, then you, you're gonna get all that balance up here. As far as a balance point, it's pretty good. Let's see, let's see. Hey, look at that, the D-bad little big man. Slightly different in thickness. Where is it? I can't even see that thickness. Woo wee. All right, so let's get a, a proper balance point. Holy, hoi, ho, ho, ho. Right about there. So you can see the weight is definitely, definitely forward, which is absolutely appropriate for what this blade is. All right, so let's do, oh, you know what we have to do? A couple hard downward throws and we'll see because, uh, you know, it does, it is a tipped machete, uh, a pointed machete with a nice drop tip. Um, we will see how that tip holds up. Hard downward throws, holy mackerel. I missed, look at the, dude. I missed and it took out this chunk. All right, well, that's a great way to see how well the scales are gonna be on there. It does have a lanyard hole with a hollow brass pin. I don't think I mentioned that, um, but a miss is a great way to test those scales. Holy Moses. All right, let's get another one of those. Oh, <laughs> I heard that go. Whew. So a good hard downward throw and man, that is in there. Wow. So I'll show you, the bite line was right there. That is huge for a machete. Wow, look at that, just a tap, just just a tap. The, um, the edge geometry is really, really fine. And I mean, really, really fine. Look at that, I'm not swinging, I'm just tapping. That is really good, that is really good. All right, so, Let's get into it. Let's get into it. This piece has got a bunch of knots. Not ideal for using machete steel. So we're gonna use machete steel because that's what we do. Baya! Baya! All right. Sound effects didn't work. Let's just try and hammer it. There we go. I should use the sound effect right there. So you can see right here is a big fat knot. And this thing, I mean, just coursed right through. Look at this. Look at this. Um, it's, it's actually um, really nice. Really nice. So at, at, first, at first hold, I'm glad I didn't judge it by how I first put it in my hand. Because uh, this thing's a performer. Now I have a big knot right here, so we're going to have to go straight through it. Let's see, see if we can't get this thing right. There we go. And you can see, I wasn't kidding, we went straight through it. Now, is there any warping? No warping, I could feel that everything's right. There's no folding and no chipping at all. This edge is per rhyme. Um, remember, this is not a like your survival knife. This is not gonna be your cutter. It's not made to be razor sharp. But we're gonna see what it what it is made for as far as sharpness. I'm gonna choke up and I'm gonna use the thin part of the blade. And look at this. If you gotta survive with it, you gotta do more than more than hack. You gotta do more than hack and look at this. Look at this. How fine these are, right? Let's do some uh, let's do some pulls. I'm gonna go with a side grip. You have enough blade, you can get plenty of side grip here. Oh my goodness, it is so smooth. So this thing was built right. I mean, the um, the edge geometry is just so nice. Look at these swoops, the little Nike symbols, man. Those are great. Now we'll do some, uh, we'll do some drags. Do some drags, man. Look at this. Now I'm just shredding it. They're all falling off. I'm gonna try and keep some on there for you. There we go. 
Look at this thing, man. All right, so let's get a uh, let's survival use. Remember, this is your machete. This is going to hack you a path. But what if you hack yourself a path and a storm starts or or part of the part of the path is on a ridge and that ridge collapses something happens and you're stuck and you're saying man i'm gonna have to wait out the night i'm gonna need a fire i'm gonna need protection i'm gonna need shelter well it's got to be able to do all that so let's make sure wow this thing this thing the edge geometry is so nice that every time it hits the stump i have to yank it out and i'm tapping you guys see what i'm doing i'm just tapping very very lightly now you'll see people carving a point in a stick and they're taking 45 minutes to carve a point. I'm not doing that. All I'm doing is tapping and it's taking me seconds to get all the way down to a near point. And when, what happens is when I get to the near point, right there, that was quick and easy. Now I can make my fine point. I can just shave away the rest. And what this did is it just took away me having to do that for hours so I expended less energy that means I used less water built in my body and less of my uh, less, less of my stored proteins. So I'm going to be okay, man. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be able to live a little bit longer without food, knowing I can accomplish tasks without beating myself up. So arrows, spears, pit spikes, fishing spears, um, tent, you know, tent spikes, uh, coat racks. I mean, think about it. Boom. Okay, now I'm going to hang something on there. I could tie a line on it. You know what I mean? Um, it's just really good. It's really good. Pit spikes are one of my favorite thing when you're in, a, in an environment where you're going to have um, big nasties. Or if you're in an environment where you have to catch food, if you can lightly cover a hole enough to where a mouse is going to fall in and you have a hundred little tiny spikes, you know, of sticks sharpened from, from something like this. Once that mouse falls on, you get those, those spikes really sharp. Boop. A little gravity fall, man, and that thing's going to go right through. You're going to eat. Or if it's a bigger beast, they're going to step through, hurt their paw, and run. If it's a bigger hole you make, who knows? You could actually you could actually take down something that's in your camp that you don't want in your camp. So that's what all that is for. People are going to ask because people always ask, um, is it good for self-defense? I don't know why people ask that about machetes, but I get that a lot with machetes. Hey, is it good for self-defense? Remember this, guys. Cavemen, a long time ago, Neanderthals and, and Cro-Magnon, they used sharpened sticks, literally sharpened sticks to kill saber-toothed cats and freaking gigantic, massive, horned, furry, woolly mammoth elephants, right? They used pointed freaking sticks. Can you defend yourself with a piece of steel that has an edge that can hack through wood? Yes, dummies, <laughs> except for you. You're not a dummy, just the other guy next to you. Um, yes, dummies, you can use this for self-defense. I guarantee it. I guarantee this will take off a leg, arm, head, any problem. Not what it's made for, but again, when Bigfoot confronts you at the ATM downtown and all you happen to have on you while you're walking through the city is a big machete, yes, it will be great for self-defense. So, spring steel. Boing, boing, boing. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it. A little bit heavier stuff. We are going to hack away. We're going to start with some small stuff that you would find that you would have to hack through, and then some bigger stuff that you can hack through. Um, one thing we're going to do is we're going to stop here. Now, my mower broke. So some of you um, keen-eyed people might say, hey, man, the grass is looking pretty freaking jungle. It is. We are in the process of getting a new one. So until then, I am left with Donnie in the bush. And I'm not talking 70s porn Donnie in the bush, you know, that, that lady. Um, whoop, right there. I'm talking about grass. This is high grass. So what we're gonna do, we're walking through, we're jungling it. When you're creating a path, that's what you need. All that is gone right there. I don't know how the camera angles are, if you can even see what, you know, how it all just went down, like that they all just disappeared. But here was grass this high, now it's gone. Which means if I'm walking through a field and the grasses are really high, I can use this to get through and make myself a nice walking path. See how easy that is? Really, really easy. 
So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to where we have a bunch of the uh, bunch of the cut down trees, and we're just gonna see how we can delimb because if you're setting up a campsite and you have trees around you, um, you want to make sure all those limbs aren't gonna poke you in the eye every time you stand up. And for us taller guys, we know how bad that sucks. So this is in my camp. I need to clear this. Okay. 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 No problem. No problem. Cleared. Now all that that was in my headspace is going to be free from my headspace. Or if I'm using this for um, shelter building and I need some structures, uh, uh, so, something to hold up structures, this is going to be just fine. I can make that stick work just like that. Let's do a couple of uh, skin shaves. Oh yeah. So the edge is really nice. You can get paper thin shaving. All right, well, what about big hacks? Well, let's see. That went pretty much all the way through, all the way to the end on a single swing. Ugh, and now I missed. So there we have it. Let's do that again. Right here, single swing and not too bad. Can you use this to clear a path of not just um, grass, but can you use it to clear a path if things are a little thicker? Abso-freaking-lutely. You know what, let's go over here. Take a walk with me. So, so far what I'm, what I'm seeing and finding is that this thing, it, it's gonna be like a do-all, right? It's gonna be a do-all. It's, it's the machete that works like a knife. And uh, that's pretty important. So look at the bite, man. Now I am at full, um, I am at a, a full grip right now, swinging and getting this kind of production out of my swings. So that means I'm going half, half swings, right? I'm not winding up and look at what's happening. It's literally just devastating what I hit. And uh, I'll show you, once you knock off the, get through and knock off the pieces, the size of the hole that's under these cuts is pretty big. You can literally hear it just right by your head. So you can see it's going through no problem. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wind up. I'm gonna hold it at the end. I'm gonna get it a half grip at the tail for full swinging. And now we're gonna see what that looks like. And it's just an obliterator, an obliterator. Now, when you're holding it down here, obviously you're lacking the control. So some of your shots aren't gonna be perfectly on target, but many of them are holding it here and doing short controlled chops. I'm getting through just as easy as full swings. I'm taking less out of me. I'm putting less on the blade. Ah, boom. I'll tell you what, that's a good freaking machete right there. That's a really good machete right there. Um, I am, I'm more impressed using it than I was opening the package. Um, and sometimes that can go the opposite way. Sometimes you open a package and you're like, oh my God, look at this knife. It's awesome. Then you go out and use it and it snaps in half or, or the edge just doesn't do it for you or something's wrong. There's nothing wrong with this. I wonder Oh, how I wonder if we can do the plastic netting challenge, which so many before it have failed. Let's see. Oh, look at that. It literally, I hope you guys were in that. It made a hole and it started cutting and then stopped cutting. But I've had knives that you guys have seen that couldn't even do that. So let's see if we can't even finish it more. We'll go deeper into the blade and look at that straight through. So. Not too bad, man. I have to say that putting it in your hand and letting your hand find it rather than it find your hand um, really, really works. Because sometimes you grab a blade real quick and now the handle has found your hand. Well, when you massage a blade, when you hold a blade, you make love to this blade, then your hand finds the handle. 
all the little crevices in your hand, all the little angles, all the bends, you can find which ones fit where, feel how they fit, and then just use that. All right, let's see. Let's see. Oh, we got to lower you guys, I think. We got to lower you guys. Now, one thing we all know is machetes are not throwers by any sense of the word. And who knows? This one could prove that true. So I'm going to back up a little bit more. And I'm going to first try. So, uh, so that was actually, that was actually enough. I'm going to try one more because I just got a bug in my mouth. Uh, because when I backed up, it was kind of nice. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it actually stuck in right here. Let's do that one more time. One more time. A machete's hard to uh, aim. Oh, all right, well, I'll tell you what. That one went tip forward, but then it hit over here. So remember when I said one more time? Collide. Oh, golly. <laughs> so you can see that one hit the tip and it hit right here in this little cutout knot. One more time. I can't aim a machete. I could throw one. Oh, but I can't aim one. All right. That's enough of that. That's enough of that. That's enough of that, but here's a testament to the strength. Um, that last one hit right here. The one before that hit right here, which means my throws got worse as I went. Um, and uh, there's no damage. There's no loosening. There's no pin shifting, everything. And you can feel your finger along here. It's super smooth where the pins are. So what do I think about the SE Expat Darien Machete? I think I found a really cool new machete. Um, I'm digging it, man. This thing is um, its much better than my first impression, which wasn't on video. I just pulled it out and went, ugh. Um, but I like it more now. I like it more after using it. This thing's all right. So if you're looking for a good machete and you want one that has a the greatest warranty in the business because it's sold through Essie and it's still considered Essie, um, it's going to have a lifetime warranty no questions asked. That's awesome. Just like the Kukri House is a lifetime warranty. Imagine that. So all your D-bad blades that you buy are guaranteed for life. So here is my self-defense machete for all you wackos. But that's what it is. Very, very good blade. I'm digging it. I'm sweating. My lip looks like, like a sprinkler system over here. So that's what a... We're gonna call it right here. We're done. I'm gonna go in, cook something good. I won't put it on film though, because then all y'all are gonna get jealous and I have to deal with the lawyers wondering why I didn't put it on video. All right, so that's it for me. I am Donnie B all day. Until next knife. <laughs>